Hey guys, my name is Alexis and welcome to my walk-in closet. Today I'm going to give you a comprehensive overview of this closet. I'm going to explain how I planned it, including all of my measurements, what we used to build it, and what my thoughts are now that I've been using this closet for about a year. Okay, so let's get into it. My closet is six feet wide by nine feet deep and it has a 28 inch pocket door. A pocket door is a door that slides into a wall rather than swings out so it saves you a lot of room um, because you don't have to allow any space for the swing of the door. So the first thing we had to decide was whether we wanted to build the closet system ourselves out of wood and MDF or if we wanted to buy a pre-built closet system from a company like Ikea. My husband initially wanted to build the closet ourselves because he felt that it would be sturdier and more long lasting, but I decided not to do that for two reasons. One, I knew it would be a lot of work to build the closet. Um, we would have to build all the shelves and then I would have to sand them all and prime them and paint them. And we had just finished building our house, our whole house and we did a lot of the labor ourselves. So by the time we got to this closet, I was done with construction. So I really was not keen on doing any more work. And second, this is the first walk-in closet I've ever had. So I did not know exactly how I wanted the layout to be. So I had a sense of what I wanted to hang up, but I was worried that I may end up wanting to change the layout a bit over time once I figured out um, how it was to use the closet. So I didn't want to build a really sturdy, long lasting, customized closet and then end up having to change that. So we found Ikea to be a really great pre-built option, which offers a lot of flexibility. So we have four wardrobe units in our closet and they were really great to assemble. I'm not saying that from experience because I actually did not assemble them. My husband did all of it, but he said that they were very easy and straightforward to assemble. He was impressed by the quality of the system. So far they've been very durable and very sturdy. The one component of the wardrobe unit that we are not completely impressed with is the backing in the wardrobe. So the walls and the shelves are very sturdy, but the backing, so the back wall of the unit, instead of being a hard um, material like the sides and the shelves are, it's more like a thick cardboard is how I would describe it. And when you receive the unit, it's packaged um, and folded in half. So you unfold it and then put it in the back of your closet. And so there is a seam that runs down. Uh, it's not really noticeable and it doesn't actually have any structural use or value. So there really is no huge negative to that, uh, aside from it just being a little bit flimsy compared to the rest of the wardrobe. Also, when you buy these wardrobes, one thing I didn't know initially is that the flexibility is awesome so you can move the shelves wherever you want in all of these little holes that run every few inches all the way up the unit. So you can completely customize your shelves and your drawers and your closet rods. But all of these holes are open. So right now you can't see that because I have filled them. But initially when we had these wardrobe units, there were little brown holes up and down every single unit. And it's not a huge deal, but I think the closets look really nice and I like the white aesthetic. And then I had these little brown holes all over the place. So I started researching online to see if there were any kind of plugs or caps that I could use. And I found a forum where someone had tagged these little caps that are actually for the Billy bookcase system, the Ikea Billy bookcase system, but they also work for the PAX wardrobe. So they are these little plastic caps right here, and they are in rows of 10. And this pack, uh, I believe it holds about 100, and it's about three or four dollars per pack, and you get 100 of these caps, and you pop them into 
all of the holes. So it is a tedious job. Um, my husband and I did this one evening and we just filled them all. So it, it is a little bit of a pain, but it looks way nicer. I also want to mention that Ikea has a great online planning tool that you can use on desktop. And it lets you put in the dimensions of your closet. You can also insert where your doors and any windows are, and you can put the wardrobe units in that room. So it's great because you can see what will actually fit well in your space and you can see how big your walkways will be and make sure that you have enough room. So I highly recommend going on and using that tool. And honestly, even if you want to custom build your own closet, that is still a great tool to use because you can put, even though you have to choose from the Ikea systems, it'll still give you a really good guide of your space and, and what good widths are. So I highly recommend checking out the Ikea planning tool um, before you go and buy anything. So in addition to the wardrobe units in this closet, we also have two dressers in our bedroom. So I have a dresser that's about two and a half feet wide and it's a five drawer dresser and my husband has a dresser that's five feet long and it's a six drawer dresser and then we have a little bit of storage with some pull out drawers under our bed so in this closet it's mostly my clothes in here um, my husband's stuff is behind me in this wardrobe unit so he has a little bit of space but honestly he works in a trade and he wears a uniform every day and on the weekends, he is always in like work clothes. So most of his stuff is in his dresser, like the clothes he wears every day are just folded up in his dresser. And then his selection of good clothes that he wears occasionally on the weekends are behind me here. So he only needed a small unit, whereas I needed all the rest. So once we decided that we were going to go with a pre-built system from Ikea, I had to figure out what I actually wanted. Initially, I did not want any drawers or shelves for my clothing whatsoever. I wanted only hanging rods. I was so sick of having to pull my clothes out of a dresser all stacked on top of each other. I couldn't find anything easily, so I just wanted everything in the open. Thankfully, my mother encouraged me to put at least some drawers in my closet for clothes, which I'm thankful for now, especially because I have now learned about Marie Kondo's folding method and I completely revamped all of our wardrobes and all of our clothing and refolded everything. And now I can actually see everything in my drawers. So if you don't know about Marie Kondo, where have you been for the last year, but also go check her out. Um, she has an awesome series on Netflix and it changed my life. So check that out. But what we decided on was mostly hanging space for our clothing, um, some drawers and shelving for shoes and purses. I did not put any doors on any of my closet systems. Sometimes people do and they look great, but I think that's probably, I would probably only put doors on if I one, had a really large closet, um, or two, I was putting the wardrobe systems in my actual bedroom and I wanted to keep things looking tidier, but because I have um, a relatively smaller closet and I have a door that I can shut to hide things in here, I, mm, I really preferred having everything open um, and I just find it so much easier when I'm going to look for clothes that I can see everything and just take it right off the rod. So the PAX wardrobe units come in various heights, widths, and depths. This closet has standard eight foot ceilings. So I was able to go with the 236 centimeter height units so they fit well in this room there was no issue with size and standard eight foot ceilings um, you can also get these units in a shorter height of 201 centimeters um, so you should absolutely measure your room before you buy your units to make sure that they will fit the units also come in two different depths so they come in 35 centimeters or 58 centimeters and so this shelf, which is my shoe and purse shelf, this is 35 centimeters deep. Whereas 
um, my three other wardrobe units which have my clothes in them are the deeper option which is 58 centimeters deep. The shelves also come in different widths so this way so this unit and the unit in the back are 75 centimeters wide and then these two units which house my clothes are 100 centimeters wide each. I believe you can also get the wardrobe systems in 50 centimeters so um, an even smaller unit so there's quite a few different options to suit your space. So I chose a more narrow wardrobe unit for this side of the room for two reasons. One, because it was holding my shoes and purses, so I didn't need a really deep shelf to hold those. And also I wanted to make sure that I had enough space in my walkway to comfortably be able to get around in my closet. And with this depth of shelf, I still have about two and a half feet in my walkway between both of my wardrobes and I find it's really spacious and very comfortable in here right now. Okay, so my shoe and purse shelf is once again 75 centimeters wide and 35 centimeters deep. And I have seven shelves in this unit. I have five shoe shelves and then two shelves that hold larger purses and um, bags and then the bottom of the wardrobe I can either put tall boots or sometimes I store my gym bag in there. So my shoe shelves are 20 centimeters tall and I find that to be a very comfortable height. I have no problem fitting my uh, high heels and my wedges in there. They fit really comfortably and there's still room on top. So those shelves 20 centimeters can either fit your shoes or it can fit smaller purses. Um, like a medium size bag fits fine in a 20 centimeter shelf. My larger shelves that fit my bigger purses are 33 centimeters tall. And I find that to again be a very comfortable height. This is more like, yeah, like a little bit of a larger purse, a medium height tons of room and then this would be my biggest bag and um, when it sits on the shelf it kind of crumples up a bit but it really comfortably easily fits that so 33 centimeters is more than enough room to fit a large bag and on my top shelf I have a, a travel backpack kind of like a small backpack that I use all the time so that fits really easily in that height as well and then my bottom shelf is for tall boots or bigger bags and it's 40 cent, 47 centimeters tall. And the way I found these dimensions was that I actually measured my clothing. So I went through my shoes and I found the tallest high heel that I had. And I also measured what I thought would be the tallest boot that I would probably ever own. And that's how I arrived at the dimension. So 47 centimeters tall should fit really tall boots that I have. If they don't, then I guess I'm going to put them in a different closet, but yeah, that should be tall enough to fit your tallest boot. So this unit in the back is for my dresses and shirts. Typically I have more of my work attire hanging out, but right now I'm working from home. So I have a little bit more of a casual selection here. My bottom hanging rod is 130 centimeters from the top of the rod to the base of the wardrobe, 130 centimeters. And for me, that is tall enough to hang almost all of my dresses. It will not fit a floor length dress without bunching up a little bit, but it will hang any of these dresses that you see hanging up, aside from probably this one, any of these dresses, which are my medium length dresses that I wear all the time for work, they will all fit there. So this dress is an example of probably like my kind of longest medium length dress that I own. And this dress is 115 centimeters long. So when I was planning my closet rods, I actually went through my wardrobe and I found what my longest dress was, my longest kind of everyday dress. 
and I knew this dress was 115 centimeters long, so 130 centimeters for my closet rod would give me enough room for if I had a dress that was a little bit longer or to have a little bit of room underneath. So that comfortably fits both dresses and shirts. So 130 centimeters comfortably fits dresses and you can also hang shirts and pants at that height. My husband's wardrobe unit in the back here, which you can see, we have his pants hanging up and that closet rod is at the same height. So that's also at 130 centimeters. And my husband is six feet tall, so he's got pretty long legs and his pants fit without touching the bottom. So that's a great height for pants or dresses. My top closet rod in this unit is at 90 centimeters above the rod below. So there's 90 centimeters between the two closet rods and it comfortably fits uh, most of my tops. So almost any shirt I own or sweater fits on there unless it would fall probably like if it's a bit of a longer shirt then it would overhang the closet rod below a little bit and I would probably move it down to the bottom but almost any top I own fits at 90 centimeters. This unit has one hanging rod at the top and five drawers and then one pull out drawer at the top for my jewelry. So I have five drawers for clothing. The top drawer has a glass front and that was just for look. I just thought it would be cute <laughs> to have a drawer that had a glass front. I did not put the glass front on all of my drawers because I did not want my clothes have to have to be tidy all the time. Um, not that they're usually really messy, but I just wanted to be able to conceal some of the stuff. Um, rather than have that exposed all the time. So I have one glass front and four that are solid white front drawers. And then the top unit is, it's a pull out shelf. And I have these nice units. So these units are from Ikea as well. It's these gray units and you can set your jewelry inside of them and they have compartments and they have felt. So it helps your jewelry stay put a little bit. They still do slide around some but the compartments are awesome because before I had this, um, my jewelry was just like this tangled mess in a box. And so I love being able to lay it all out. I also keep my sunglasses and a few like smaller clutches or wallets on that top shelf as well. So that is what I use for the dressers. The top drawer that I have here I use for my active wear. So my pants, sports bras, tops go there. My second drawer right now, typically this is work attire that I would wear on a daily basis. But again, since I'm working from home, I am not wearing my formal work wear very often. So I actually have swapped around my wardrobe for the time being. And I have more like jogging pants, shorts and skirts and some of my longer sleeve workout tops, which I don't wear as often, I keep those in this drawer. My next drawer right now is my work attire. So I have my dress pants, skirts, some tank tops, and then I have my jeans and other casual pants. I also have a drawer here, which is sort of like an odds and ends drawer. So I keep uh, a spare coat hangers in that drawer. I also keep a little bin with kind of random accessories, including spare caps. I have to return some of these, but um, I plan on getting some Billy bookcases soon, so I'm keeping them for that purpose. Uh, yeah, so I just have a little plastic bin where I store miscellaneous odds and ends like that. I have a couple small belts and a few hooks that I plan to hang up in here, in there for now. I also have some seasonal, um, like a few ponchos that I have rolled up in that drawer. And my bottom drawer is where I keep my bathing suits and my, right now it's sort of like my seasonal wear. So my kind of like summer beach cover-ups and that are in that drawer. And outside of this closet is where I keep my pajamas and like my work clothes around the house, like for painting or gardening or whatever, kind of like my old bad clothes are in there. And my socks and underwear are in the dresser in my bedroom. So that's what I keep in these drawers. The top of this is a glass top, which I think is very nice because you can see all of your jewelry 
all the time and it's just really cute and aesthetic so I really like that and above that I have a hanging rod at the same height as this unit at the top. Um, it's the top position that you can go in these PAX wardrobes and it is 110 centimeters above this glass top shelf so it has ample room to hang any top that you want. I hang my blazers and my dress shirts and sort of like my four more formal work tops above this unit which I wear a little bit less right now especially so there's tons of room at 110 centimeters to comfortably fit some clothing and still have space where you can see inside the glass unit really easily this hanging rod in the back is where I hang most of my dresses the wall is actually on a 45, so we weren't able to put another wardrobe unit back here. So instead, my husband bought this closet rod from a home building center and he installed it himself on the sides of each of these PAX systems. So it's not part of the PAX wardrobe. And we hung the closet rod 185 centimeters off the ground and I find that that is a great height for any kind of dress including long floor length dresses so you can see that this dress which is floor length on me uh, does not touch the ground and it is a great height because it allows for storage both below and above the clothing um, I can fit a standard size Rubbermaid tote underneath this clothing and we could also if we wanted to install a shelf above uh, for extra storage so 185 centimeters is a great height for one closet rod so in addition to the wardrobe units in here I also have a mirror on this wall which is not quite floor length but it's pretty tall and then back here we have right now what is a blank wall um, which is maybe two feet wide and that's where I would like to hang up some items like belts um, and possibly my husband's ties and maybe a few hats so we're still it's still a work in progress we will eventually get those hooks up to have a little bit more accessory storage up on the wall lighting is another important consideration in your closet I have one light in the center of this closet in the ceiling and it's a motion sensored light so my electrician installed a motion sensored switch so as soon as you enter the room the light comes on and I absolutely love that feature because this room has no windows so when the door shut it's always dark and anytime I'm in here I need light so it's so convenient that every time I walk in the light automatically comes on I also think there are really cool lighting options from Ikea and other places. I've seen some options on Amazon too that you can have lighting in your shelving. So some people run LED strips along the bottom of their shelves to illuminate the shelf below and I think it looks awesome. So I am going to look into that more. We haven't installed that yet but especially in a few of the shelves here and in these deeper systems it can get a little bit darker in the back where there's a shadow. So I think lighting is a really good option to think of too when you're designing your closet, make sure that you have enough light. I also see people wrap their mirrors in LEDs. I want to try some DIYs. I've seen a really neat um, light strip, LED light strip DIY for your mirror. So uh, tons of that. So just keep that in mind that if you do not have windows in your closet, you do need to be conscious of the fact that you will need bright lighting um, in your space. Overall, I'm really happy with this closet design. I've been using this closet for about a year now. We moved in close to one year ago. It just, it feels very clean. It feels very spacious. I don't come in and feel overwhelmed and crowded. I find that it's, um, yeah, it's really nice and organized. And so I highly recommend these PAX units eventually over time we'll see how the white holds up i'm worried that um at some point i'm not sure if you know it might get hit or dinged or something and we might have to replace them at that time we may end up building uh 
closet system more permanently, but for now, I think these are an, a wonderful option. I really don't have any downfalls to them at all. And um, yeah, so if you are building your own closet, that is so exciting and wonderful. And I hope that I was able to give you some helpful information in this video. I hope that the measurements and dimensions are helpful for you. I know that when I was planning this closet, I had a really hard time finding specific measurement information. I did see lots of uh, images on Pinterest and I saw people giving closet tours, but I didn't see anyone that gave a really detailed breakdown of their measurements. So that's why I wanted to make this video because I hope that for someone else that's building a closet, this might be a great resource for you to know uh, what sizes fit different elements of your closet and what sizes I have found to be really useful. And if you like the video, definitely give it a like below. Feel free to subscribe and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.